Welcome to the fourth podcast of this series brought to you by Physical and Health Education Canada that outlines important education principles that support teachers to foster the development of physical literacy among students. My name is Ishan Angra, and I will be the host for today's podcast. The podcast was developed by the Center for Healthy Development through Sport and Physical Activity at Brock University, located in St. Catharines, Ontario, Canada, in conjunction with PHE Canada and Sport Canada. Individuals who are physically literate move with competence in a wide variety of physical activities that benefit the development of the whole person. Quality physical education programs provide one of the most effective ways to foster the development of physical literacy amongst children and youth. Over the next several months, we will be examining various teaching strategies that educators should consider when fostering the development of physical literacy amongst their students. Using the acronym EDUCATION, we will examine one teaching strategy per podcast that highlights important pedagogical strategies that can help teachers implement a quality physical education program with physical literacy in mind. In today's podcast, the C in education will be our focus. In our education acronym, the C stands for character. Physical education provides opportunities for children and youth to interact together. Whether it is by playing games, practicing gymnastics or dance routines, or hiking through nature together, physical education requires students to work together. As a result, it provides the ideal venue to foster character development through the development of life skills. Life skills are a set of skills that people use to effectively deal with life challenges. Just as it is important to have a wide variety of fundamental skills to be physically literate, it is also important for students to have a wide variety of life skills to help them deal with a multitude of different challenges. UNICEF has defined three categories of life skills. The first deals with communication and interpersonal skills. Examples of communication and interpersonal skills include negotiation and refusal skills, empathy building, cooperation and teamwork, and advocacy. Life skills are best taught by doing. Hence, physical activities provide a unique way for participants to practice using life skills so they are better able to transfer these life skills to behaviors outside of the physical activity environment. Consider the following example of how a cooperative game can be used to foster communication and interpersonal skills. The following example is a cooperative game called Blanket Toss. In this game, teammates start off by seeing how many times they can toss a ball in the air using a blanket and then catching it with a blanket. Teams can see how many times in a row they can successfully throw and catch the ball without letting it drop. Once teams are ready, instructors can then modify the game so that one group attempts to throw the ball to another group who tries to catch the ball. Teams can see how many times they can catch the ball between them. An increased challenge is after each successful attempt, teams move five steps farther away from the other team. Members of the group soon realize that to be successful and to improve on previous attempts, the entire group must cooperate and work together as a team. The next category of life skills is decision-making and critical thinking skills. Decision-making and critical thinking skills include characteristics such as gathering information, evaluating possible consequences, and analyzing skills. Examples of critical thinking skills include viewing information sources generated from various sources and making a decision through a critical informative lens. Consider the following example of how a cooperative game can be used to foster decision-making and critical thinking skills. The following is an example of crossing the falls. In this game, teammates work together to cross the falls, which in this case is a large open space, using only the equipment provided. If a body part touches the open space between the start and the finish, the entire team must start again. Teammates must work together to decide how they are going to get everyone and the equipment safely across the falls. Once a team successfully crosses the falls, the instructor can make it more challenging by removing one or more pieces of equipment. This game reinforces the importance of individuals working together to make decisions. A team is only successful if the entire team reaches the other side successfully, so everyone must cooperate and make decisions that are best for the entire group. The final category of life skills are coping and self-management skills. 
Examples of coping and self-management skills include increased confidence, assuming control, taking responsibility, making a difference to bring about a positive change, and managing feelings and stress. Consider the following example of how a cooperative game can be used to foster coping and self-management skills. In this final video example, students take part in a game called Mingle Mingle Tennis. To prepare for this game, instructors should write a letter and number between 1 to 10 on a class set of tennis balls using permanent marker. Each student then receives a tennis ball. When the music starts, students start to move throughout the space, and when they make contact with another person, they exchange tennis balls by using an underhand toss. When the music stops, instructors ask the participants to form groups of four or five. The instructor then gives the participants a task that involves either the letters or numbers. For example, can each person in the group think of a word that starts with the letter on their tennis ball that helps them alleviate stress? Or can the entire group come up with a math equation where the answer equals 10 by using the numbers on each of the tennis balls? Instructors can also encourage different forms of locomotion to be used while mingling when the music is playing and or encouraging different forms of sending away skills with the tennis balls, such as bouncing the ball to another person or striking the ball out of one's hand. One of the benefits of this activity is that it can be done anywhere and anytime, so it can be a good fitness break throughout the school day. In addition, by encouraging individuals to come up with their own answers, it helps the group foster a sense of control as well as responsibility. Individuals can also share strategies with how they deal with stress in a fun and creative way. There are many benefits to teaching life skills related to the development of character. Individuals who possess proficient life skills are less likely to take part in delinquent behaviors, violence, drug use, and high-risk sexual behavior. They are also less likely to be isolated and rejected by their peers, and are less prone to emotional disorders. Life skill competence is also related to increased social adjustment, self-esteem, academic performance, and pro-social behaviors. These and other character benefits within sport are identified in Positive Youth Development and Physical Activity Settings, written by Dr. Nick Holt from the University of Alberta. Throughout the 10 chapters, many examples are given surrounding the role that physical activities can play to assist in the development of leadership, peace, positive relationships, and inclusion. A variety of different physical activity settings are provided to demonstrate that the promotion of life skills that build up students' character may be developed across diverse physical activity settings. The development of character through the attainment of life skills is consistent with almost all physical education curricula across Canada. British Columbia's physical education curriculum includes a curriculum strand called Safety, Fair Play, and Leadership. Within this area, students learn skills related to encouraging others of all ability levels, peer helping, and respecting diversity. This curriculum will also be adopted by the Yukon Territory. In the Alberta Physical Education Curriculum, an entire curriculum strand is devoted to developing cooperation skills through PE. Students from kindergarten to grade 12 are expected to achieve outcomes related to positive communication, fair play, leadership, and teamwork. In Manitoba, a personal and social management stream within the physical and health education curriculum focuses upon the development of skills such as goal setting and planning, decision making, problem solving, conflict resolution, and stress management. In Ontario, the new health and physical education curriculum identifies living skills as a curricular strand which transacts each of the other curricular expectations. As well, the Literacy and Numeracy Secretariat in Ontario identifies the critical importance of character development to enhance students' learning experiences in a healthy school environment. In Newfoundland and Labrador, life skills are taught through a spiritual and moral development stream which places a high value upon character development. Other examples of physical education curriculum addressing the development of character include Saskatchewan, which includes expectations related to personal, social, and cultural perspectives, Quebec, which stresses the importance of cooperation as a curricular expectation, Nova Scotia and New Brunswick, which both identify valuing, and Prince Edward Island, Nunavut, and the Northwest Territories, 
where positive interpersonal skills are identified as a key curricular outcome. These results demonstrate that physical education across Canada has been recognized by ministries of education as a vehicle to teach children and youth important life skills which assists in the overall development of their students. Dr. Sandra Gibbons from the University of Victoria and Beverly Robinson, a physical education specialist with the Calgary School Board, provide an excellent resource in Volume 70, Issue 4 of the Physical and Health Education Journal for ways in which to assess the development of several character traits. Through the use of rubrics, Gibbons and Robinson provide examples of ways to assess fair play, teamwork, cooperation, sportspersonship, and positive social behavior. The authors also provide guidelines to educators for creating their own rubrics to assess learning of various character traits developed through physical education. In summary, many scholars and international organizations have been studying character development in physical education programs. Current physical education curricula has identified the development of life skills as being critical in the overall character development of students. Such life skills include communication, decision-making and critical thinking, and self-management and coping skills. The result is often healthier and more positive learning environments in school communities. Join us next month for our next podcast, where we will focus upon the importance of developing ability and its links to lifelong physical activity.